Welcome to Karis Daily Live Bible Study. Join believers from around the globe to study the Bible with Andrew Womack and instructors from Karis Bible College. Hey everybody, welcome to Karis Daily Live Bible Study. My name is Erin Weisbro, and we are so excited that you're joining us live tonight. And before we get started with an awesome word from the God, from God, I can't wait. We have just a couple quick announcements for you. Remember that we invite you to interact with us tonight by asking questions. As Mr. Bennett begins to teach, you may have questions that arise in your heart, and we want to hear those questions that are according to the teaching that he's teaching on. So you can post those questions in the comments section below on whatever platform you're watching, and please stay tuned for the end of the broadcast. We're gonna try to get to as many of those questions as we can tonight. And then also remember that we're here live five days a week during the weekday. Those times that you can join us are Monday and Friday at 10 a.m., Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6 p.m., and Wednesday morning at 7 a.m. We would also like to take this time to thank all of the friends and the partners of Andrew Womack Ministries and Karis Bible College. We could not do all the things that we do here at the ministry without your love, your prayers, and your financial support. Genuinely and sincerely, we thank you. If this ministry has been a blessing to you and you would like to donate or become a partner, the shot. <laughs> become a partner at any time, you can do so by going to awmi.net slash give or call our helpline at 719-635-1111. You got a sneak peek of our speaker tonight. <laughs> and then when you um, call, remember that you can also receive prayer 24 seven at that helpline. We have phone ministers standing by. They love God, they love the word, and they know how to pray according to the word and will of God. And that is so important. Um, again, that helpline number is 719-635-1111. Uh, don't do life alone. Let us be a part of life with you today. And then also, if you are interested in attending Karis Bible College, we have some exciting news. Um, spring registration is still open. So if it's been on your heart and you're desiring to see a change in your life, don't wait another day or even another year. You can go to charisbiblecollege.org slash apply to find out more information. Also, our phone minister standing by can ask, answer any questions for you. Um, but let the word of God transform your life. It is so powerful and you will never regret it. So again, go to charisbiblecollege.org slash apply to check out that information. And then last but not least, we have an exciting event happening this week. Actually, it's starting tonight, the Phoenix Gospel Truth Conference. And of course, Andrew Womack is hosting that event with guest speaker Lance Wallnow. And these Gospel Truth Conferences are such a blessing. It's free to register if you're local in the Phoenix area, or you can also watch the live stream for free online. So you can check out that full schedule and information on our website at awmi.net slash events. And that will be happening from this evening through Saturday. So check it out. Now it is my honor and pleasure to introduce you fully to our speaker tonight, Mr. Daniel Bennett. Hi. Well, thank you. And sorry for messing up the announcements. <laughs> That's I, okay. I was reaching down for a tissue paper and I, then all of a sudden I saw this big bald spot you know? <laughs> like that ah, looks familiar. That was awesome. So anyway, next time I'll be more yes. careful with it. Well, anyway. this is uh, Daniel Bennett, our executive director of academics. So glad to have you here tonight, yeah. Daniel. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, and I'm excited to be here. Happy New Year, everybody. Yeah. If you're watching this in the future, we're in early January, as you can probably <laughs> guess. Um, I'm really excited. As you mentioned, we're about to start our new semester of Karis. Yes. Um, and so the spring semester, um, so we'll, we'll be meeting a lot of new students who are showing up here soon. So yeah. that'll be exciting. Maybe uh, some of you might be showing up in January. Amen. So um, yeah, look forward to meeting you. Awesome. So anyway, I'm very excited about sharing with you all today. This is one of my favorite topics and it is how to hear God more clearly or what I've titled it is hearing God more clearly. And like I said, this is one of my favorite topics uh, here at Karis in first year. I have one full course on um, prayer and I have another full course on how to hear God. And so they're both related to this. So I can literally talk about this for many, many hours. I'm just 
uh, going to share some nuggets with you all and, uh, and hopefully spark some thoughts or some insight or revelation that will, um, that will help you hear God's voice more clearly in your life. Um, as I say, this is uh, something that's transformed my life. I've always loved hearing God's voice. So what I, what I want to start with is just kind of why hear God? Why is it important or valuable to hear God's voice? Uh, hopefully you already have a desire to. Um, so I'm just going to hit on a few things just to kind of stir up and remind you of some of the reasons why it's such a big deal that we can hear God. And then we'll talk about how to hear him more clearly in the second half of this. And so my first point here is that it's one of the best parts of the new covenant. You know, it's easy just to forget that sometimes and just think, you know, well, yeah, of course, um, I want to hear God's voice. And we forget sometimes that this is a major distinction of life in Christ, life post cross in the new covenant. So that's very different than what anybody ever had before then, right? In the old covenant, under the law, under, you know, Abraham's covenant, um, people without a covenant um, before Abraham or people who weren't um, Israelites or Jews in the, in the past, uh, they didn't have what we have today. This is absolutely amazing that we get to hear God's voice. You know, in the Old Testament, when somebody would pray, it was a monologue. Right. They're talking like to God, like it's like they're talking through a megaphone and they're kind of hoping like, hey, Lord, you know, mm -hmm. um, they're hoping that they might get an answer, but there's no guarantee that they'll get an answer. So they just kind of give a speech toward God and maybe they get a word from a prophet. Maybe they get an audible voice. Maybe an angel shows up. Maybe they can put out a fleece like Gideon and get an answer that way. But for the most part, it's one sided conversation and they just are saying their speech and that's it. There's no guarantee. Um, there's no assurance that it's a conversation. It's a one-sided discussion. In the new covenant, we don't just get to talk to God. We get to talk with God. Amen. We get to have a real relationship with him. We get to talk with him where he speaks to us. We speak back to him. We have dialogue with him. So it's amazing. It's a, it's a real conversation with him. Another thing with this is that we don't have to always start the conversation. I right? see so if it's one sided, then it's always up to me to decide when I'm going to talk to God right now. OK, I'm going to pray right now. But see, in the new covenant, the fact that we get to have relationship with God, it means that sometimes God can prompt me and say, hey, Daniel, I want to talk about something. Mm -hmm. He can spark things inside of us. He can initiate topics or conversations. Uh, we can be in communion with him 24 mm seven. -hmm. And so this is a, a really cool part of the new covenant. And it's not like a megaphone and it's not even like a phone where you hang up, right? Sometimes when people think about prayer, they say, in Jesus' name, amen. And when they say amen in their mind, they're like, and I just hung up. Now it's just me again. But in the new covenant, that's not how this is. We get to have communion and fellowship with God all day long. It doesn't mean you have to be talking nonstop. Just like when I hang out with my wife, it's not like we're talking nonstop, but we can be near each other and, and I can talk when I want to. And it's not just words, sometimes it's just um, communion, right? Without words. Again, all of these things open up topics that we could pursue, and I'm going to move on here. Um, along these lines, another benefit of being able to hear God is that we can ask him questions and get answers. Right? Again, it's not just um, saying, here's my speech. I hope I said it really well. Some people, when they think about prayer and how do I get better at praying, they think more about, like, how do I make it impressive? How do I speak in King James English? How do I use fancy words? How do I impress everybody who hears me? How do I, you know, all that. That's not what it's about. It's we can have a real conversation with God. Um, it's two directions. It's I'm talking, I'm listening, the whole deal. So it changes how we pray if we know we can hear God. Um, along these lines, again, the third reason why it's such a big deal to hear God's voice is that it means we can have a real friendship with him, real relationship, real intimacy. See, if I can't hear somebody, I can only pretend. And, and I mean, if I can't be if I can't communicate with somebody because it's not just um, speaking and listening. There's many ways to communicate. But when you can communicate with somebody, you can have a real relationship. Otherwise, it's just pretending. When someone's, if someone says, I'm a friend of God, but they can't hear his voice, they're just pretending. You see, a real relationship requires communication to go both directions. Um, next point. And uh, anyway, I'm imagining all the different questions these lead to. And again, like, that's why I have two full courses on this kind of stuff. Yeah. So it pains me to move on quickly, but I'm just laying some groundwork here. Um, another benefit of hearing God's voice is that we can get direction from him. I mean, this is huge. Yeah. This is um, one of the big main reasons why people sometimes feel the need to hear God's voice. 
Right? Life is full of decisions, big decisions, little decisions. Sometimes problems come our way and we need to know what to do. Sometimes opportunities come our way and we need to know what to do, right? Maybe you're passionate about three different things and you need to decide which one's going to be your career, which one are you going to invest in and pour yourself into. And you're like, I don't know which one. All three are good. Right? Life isn't just about problems and overcoming problems. Sometimes it's tougher when it's like, I. There's so many things I want to do, so many things I'm passionate about. I want to live here, live there, and live there. I want to do this and do that and do the other. Um, and you can't say yes to everything. And so sometimes you need direction for the opportunities that come your way. You know, so it could be questions of like, where should I live? Right? It's like, I know that I'm not called to live here anymore, but where should I live? And being able to hear God, He can give you direction. Right? Another question might be, who should I marry? Right? That's a big one. Should I marry them? Should I not marry them? Um, maybe you're saying, what should I do with my life this year? What should I do with the rest of my life? What should I do in the next five minutes? Right? If we can hear God's voice, he can give us direction on things like this. Um, another benefit is that God can save us from disaster. Right? So again, it's um, not just solving problems. Sometimes it's avoiding problems. Right? Don't take that road. Stop walking over there. I mean, it can be big things, little things. Don't go there. Um, and once, I don't have time to tell the whole story, but once I was walking, and I just felt God tell me, stop, turn around right now. And I stopped and turned around. And if I hadn't stopped and turned around, I would have been in serious trouble. Um, sorry to tease you like that, but I can't tell the whole story right now. <laughs> um, God might tell you, don't trust this person, right? Maybe somebody's saying all the right things and you just get a check in your spirit of, no, there's something off here. Don't trust this person. This is going to end in disaster if you trust this person in this situation or um, things like that. Or sometimes it might even be, you know, God's saying, wake up. I need you to pray for someone right now. Right? It's not just disaster in your life. It might be for somebody else where God's like, something's going to happen. I need someone to, to be my mouthpiece in, this, in the world right now. I need you to um, um, do something or, or help that person out, things like that. It might be, go give that person 20 bucks. And I'm, again, I'm not talking about audible voice here. We'll, we'll get to all this more in a little bit. Um, very rarely does God speak in an audible voice to us. And that's not even the highest form of hearing God because Christ is inside of us the best way of hearing God is inside of us. Mm -hmm. An audible voice means that God's going through our physical ears to get through to us. That's, that's the lowest form of intimacy, right? Because it's saying, I need to hear you outside of myself. Sometimes people pursue that because it sounds really cool. Just, and man, it'd be so simple if I just had an audible booming voice show up or a still small voice show up. But the main way God wants to speak to us is through the inside because his spirit's inside of us. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we'll get to a little bit more later. Um, I won't go too in depth on it though. Um, another benefit of hearing God's voice, there are just so many things he wants to tell us. There's so many things he wants to show us. There's so many things he wants to teach us and do in us and do through us and do with us. There's so many things he has for us that we need to be able to hear him. Where God says, let me show you this. Let me show you that. Um, again, bringing verses to your memory. That's one of the main ways you can hear God's voice. If you pour God's word into your heart, then the Holy Spirit can bring scriptures to your remembrance right at the right time. And you just have different things coming to mind yeah. uh, regularly of like, man, this, that just sprung to my thoughts right there. Um, and God just showed me this thing I'd never seen before. I, mm -hmm. I just connected these two verses. I'd never seen that before. So and there's so many things um, that God wants to show us. See, uh, I'll move now to, so those are some of the benefits of hearing God's voice. Now some of the downsides. One is a big one. If you can't hear God's voice, the Christian life is just a list of rules. And that is so lifeless, right? If you can't hear God's voice, it means you have to have somebody else hear God for you and say, do this, don't do this, do this, don't do this. You know, should I marry this person? I have to go ask somebody else. Should I marry that person? Should I take this job? I have to ask somebody else. And this becomes a list that grows longer and longer and longer of things you're trying to remember to do instead of it just being a natural relationship where it just comes naturally to you. Like, no, God and I walk hand in hand um, every day and we make decisions together and God's speaking to me constantly and he's stirring things in my heart constantly. So if you can't hear God's voice, life becomes a list of rules and I can't stand living like that. I'd much rather be holy and righteous and full of kindness and love and forgiveness because that's who I am and that's what God sparks inside of me instead of I'm trying to do that because I'm following a list of rules. Um, also, if we can't hear God's voice, like I mentioned already, we miss out on the relationship. Now it's this long distance relationship with God. And I don't know if you've ever been in a long distance relationship, but it's not nearly as fun as being with somebody. 
depending on your relationship. Let's assume it's a good, healthy relationship. <laughs> Amen. Um, it's, it's not nearly as much fun to be on the other side of the world as somebody else. And that's how some people treat their relationship with God is, yeah, we're, we're in a relationship, but I never see him. He never calls. I never call. We, you know, um, he has to send me letters by mail. You know, it's just not the same. So we miss out. And, and again, a third downside to not being able to hear God's voice is that um, we will need someone else to hear him for us. And I kind of already mentioned this one. But if you can't hear God clearly, then you're always going to be running to other people. Right. And even even today, you know, some of the questions I, I discourage you from saying, oh, how to hear God's voice. You know, please tell me what to do in this situation, because that's what we usually have to do when we can't hear God clearly. And that's OK when we're baby Christians or toddler Christians. But God wants us to grow out of that right. to where we we can go to others for wise counsel. But where we don't have to say, I need you to hear God for me. Right. Like the children of Israel, they went to Moses and said, you talk to God. We're scared of him. Right. In the new covenant, we really God's best is for us to have that that boldness where it's like, I'm going to go to God and ask him for stuff. And then when I go to other people, it's more for confirmation or more just for counsel or just to help me um, help me figure out the timing and different nuances to things like that. And not just kind of like tell me what to do and I'll do it because I have no idea what God's saying right now. An example of this. Have you ever called home now um, for those of you who are my age and older, this will be easy to understand. For those who are younger, back in the day, people didn't have cell phones. Um, and when I was growing up, cell phones were very, very rare. And you had to call somebody's house to talk to them. And uh, <laughs> I know that sounds weird in this day and age, but you used to have to call houses and say, so-and-so I there. remember, yeah. Right? And so, uh, so imagine this scenario with me. And maybe this has happened to you before. You call your house. And say, for example, you're trying to talk to your spouse and your child or a child answers the phone. Mm -hmm. And so imagine that it's like a three year old. I have a three year old. So imagine calling your house and a three year old answers and you're like, hi, um, is mommy there? And they say, yes. And you say, oh, what would you know, can I talk to mommy or whatever? She can't come to the phone right now. So imagine you're having this whole conversation and you're using somebody else. Mm -hmm. and you're saying, what does she want for dinner? Does she have dinner or should I pick something up or should I buy some groceries? And the child just says, mommy likes spaghetti. And you're like, okay, but um, this, is there spaghetti tonight? Like, you know, if you have a conversation through a child trying to talk to somebody, at some point you're going to say, could you just put them on the phone, please? Yeah. <laughs> right? I need to talk to them. This is getting yeah. way too confusing. Yeah. And so it's very similar when people can't hear God's voice clearly. Right. Because they're saying, you know, should I do this? Should I not do this? They're going through somebody else. Mm -hmm. And no matter how wise somebody is, it's never going to be as good as being able to hear God directly. Amen. And like I say, it's great to have wise counsel in your life, but trying to go through somebody else to talk to God is so much more cumbersome than just talking to God directly. Okay. Right? So some people unintentionally turn their pastor or a friend or a mentor into their priest. And we're not, Jesus is supposed to be our priest, our high priest, mm -hmm. where I go to him to talk to the father. I don't have to go to somebody else to talk to Jesus for me. Mm -hmm. um, and so again, we want to be able to hear God clearly ourselves so that it's not confusing and cumbersome because you get, even if they have great intentions, it's just, you're missing some of the message, right? Mm -hmm. um, they'll tell you things and you're like, I don't, is that exactly what God meant? Did he mean it that way? Did he mean it that way? Mm -hmm. And so it's great to be able to talk to God directly ourselves. Yeah. Anyway probably spent too much time on the benefits. Let's move on to how. How do we hear God more clearly? Like I said, you can talk about this for hours and hours and hours. I just have, I think I have five nuggets here that I'll try to get to. Um, number one is want to. I know this sounds really simple, but it's really, really important. It takes initiative. I see God has already pursued us. And so we're reacting to him, right? We love God because he first loved us. So this is all a reaction, but in a sense, our reaction is initiative is if I want him, I'll pursue him. Do I want to hear his voice? If we don't have the desire, you could study how to hear God's voice all day long and nothing's going to happen if you don't actually want him. Jeremiah 29 verse 13 says, and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Mm -hmm. See, God, God is not trying to make this difficult for us. He's saying, if you want me, you will find me. You will seek me and find me when you, when you um, search for me with all of your heart. How much do you want to hear God's voice? Do you, you know, do you just think you want it? Do you just say you want it? Or do you really want to? Mm -hmm. It makes a big difference. Matthew 7, 8 says basically the same thing. Matthew 7, 8 says, For everyone who asks receives, 
and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. Again, God is trying to provide these things to us. If you seek, you will find. If you want to hear God's voice, you will. That's key. If you don't have the desire, you don't need to listen to the rest of this. Just say, God, I want, like, I want to want to. If that's where you're at, start there. I wish I wanted to. But really, it's more, God, I want to hear your voice more clearly. Um, and I'll get to that here. Um, number two, that was a very quick one, just to set the stage. Number two is a little bit longer. And this is, know that you already do. And this is really crucial. This is very foundational. John 10, 27. Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Mm -hmm. My sheep hear my voice. That's Jesus saying this. It doesn't say, my sheep can hear my voice. Jesus doesn't say, my sheep should hear my voice. He says, my sheep hear my voice. This is a fact. Jesus himself said this, my sheep hear my voice. If you are born again, you hear his voice. If you disagree with that, you're wrong. Sorry to tell you, let God be true and every man a liar, right? If you disagree with God, you're wrong. Now, it might not feel like you hear his voice, and that's why this is called hearing God's voice more clearly. Mm -hmm. But see, here's the thing. If you, if you think you can't hear him, or if you think he's not speaking to you, you're going to try to solve the wrong problem, right? You're going to approach God and say, please speak to me, please speak to me, please speak to me. He is speaking to you. So you're, you're knocking on the wrong door. Right? You're knocking on an open door saying, please open. And he's like, the door is already open. Mm -hmm. And so we don't want to try to solve the wrong problem. If you think he's not speaking to you, you're going to approach him the wrong way. Or, right, like Andrew teaches, you've already got it. You've already got the, you know, you're, you already can hear him. Stop asking for him to talk. And if you say, I can't hear him, what's wrong with me? You're going to approach it the wrong way because you're going to say, I don't know what's wrong with me, but I just can't hear God. I can't hear God. No, you do hear God. Mm -hmm. You do hear his voice. So again, it changes our approach. See, instead of saying, how do I get God to talk to me? Or how do I hear him? We switch our approach if we understand this and it becomes, how do I learn to recognize God's voice? Yeah. He is speaking to me, but I'm not recognizing his voice. So that might be part of it. Or it could be, I do recognize his voice, but how do I hear him more clearly? That's where the title of this came from, mm -hmm. is I recognize his voice, but I wanna hear him more clearly, right? If, you know, I recognize my wife's voice. But if she's talking to me and I have 50 other people yelling at me, it's okay. I recognize her voice, but it's still hard to hear her. There's a lot of distractions. It's very annoying to try to talk to her right now because I've got all these other voices screaming at me. So on the one hand, I want to recognize her voice more clearly, and then I want to hear her voice more clearly. And that's really what it's about. So again, the first key is to want to. The second key is to know that you already do. I do hear you, but I would like to hear you more clearly, Lord. And that totally changes how we approach this conversation with God. How do I hear you more clearly? How do I learn to recognize your voice more? So point number three is get to know what God is like. This is crucial. And this is more on the recognition side. See, if you know somebody really well, it's easier to recognize them. Again, I keep using my wife as an example. If somebody said, Daniel, your wife said this, I, would, I could easily say that does not sound like her. She would not have said that. Or I could say, yes, that sounds like her. I, I believe that she said that. And more accurately, it's more like my wife's talking to me and there's 50 other people yelling. And one person says, Daniel, I'm your wife. And they say something, I'm like, no, I know my wife, you're not her. I, I know her and the more I know her, the more I recognize her. And so it's really, really important. Once I had somebody tell me, they're like, God told me this terrible thing and God told me that and God told me how disappointed he is in me and God told me hey, he's punishing me and how I deserve this condemnation and God, all these things. And I was sitting back and I was like, that is not God. Mm. I know him. That was not God's voice. You think it's God's voice. You are deceived. That is not what God is like. That is not how God talks to us. Mm -hmm. I don't d doubt that you heard a voice. You know, I don't know whether you heard something or not. I do know that that was not God's voice. If you don't know what God is like, you are susceptible to all kinds of lies of people, counterfeit voices, thoughts, random things mm -hmm. that come your way, right? Yeah, because yeah, they're telling me like, yeah, God told me that I was worthless. And it's like, God would not tell you that you're worthless. You're made in his image. I know for a fact that was not God. Somebody else is telling you that. It might be your flesh. It might be the devil. It might be demonic. It might be just lies that have been, you know, stirring around in your mind. Whatever it is, that was not the voice of God. But you have to know what he's like to be able to look at that and say, no, he's not like that. God would not say that to me. That is not something that God would do. Right, 2 Corinthians 11 verse 14 addresses this. 
So 2 Corinthians 11, 14 says, And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Even Satan himself pretends to be an angel of light to deceive people. See, that's the thing. The devil doesn't show up. And when I say devil, I mean any demonic power, right? I mean, the devil's not omnipresent. He's not personally assigned to every single person on earth. But anything demonic, or even just your flesh or other people who are um, repeating lies, whether they have good intentions or bad intentions. But the devil doesn't just show up and say, I'm the devil. Here's a lie I want you to believe. Mm -hmm. That's not how lies work. The whole point of a lie is that you think it's true. It's presented as truth. And so the whole point is to trick you. Right, so so many times people are like, no, that's not a lie because it feels true. That's the whole point. A whole, the whole point of a lie is that it feels true. It's something that we're, we believe because it seems believable, and yet it's not true. Right, so um, lies are trying to trick us. So a, a lie doesn't show up again and say, this is a lie. Believe that God doesn't love you. And you're like, you're right. I'm going to believe that God doesn't love me. The way this works is that it'll be, you'll think you hear a voice where it says, where you think it's God speaking and saying, I don't love you. You're not worthwhile. I don't care about you, whatever. And you're like, man, that's harsh, Lord. Okay, I guess it's true. And it's a lie, right? It's like the devil showing up and saying, I'm God. I don't love you. And you're like, oh my goodness, you're God and you don't love me? No, it's a lie, right? That's the whole point of being deceived is that the whole, the whole goal is to pretend that it's God speaking to you or that it's you speaking to yourself, right? Another way that lies can approach is a voice might say, I'm you. I'm worthless. And you're like, oh my goodness, I'm worthless, right? It doesn't speak to you, you're worthless. It says, I'm worthless, right? And so you, if you buy into that and say, oh my goodness, I'm worthless, or oh my goodness, I'm not good at anything, or oh my goodness, I'm ugly, or oh my goodness, no one likes me. And this voice is just telling you, no one likes me, I'm worthless, all this stuff. If you know God, what, who God is like, what he's like, and you know who he's made you to be, you can look at it and say, that was not my thought. That is not me. That was not God. That was not me. That is a lie. A lot of people absorb lies. They chew on them, digest it, embrace it, and then they have to fight it off. It's so much easier to be resistant and say, I know God's voice. That is not God. Or I know who I am in the spirit. That is not how I think. That is not my thought. I don't care if it's in the first person. That was not my thought. I'm not going to take ownership of that. Okay. The way we know God is through his word. Right? The more I study the word and I see who God says he is and what he says about me, you become immune to these kinds of lies. Where it's like, no, that's not me. If, if, if I mess up, if I sin and I hear, you know, I hear a thought that says, I'm no good. I'm like, that is, I know I sinned. That was wrong. But that was not me that I'm no good. That was not me because I'm a new creation. I'm forgiven. I'm, I'm righteous, I'm holy, I'm pure. That's who I am. And so the more I know the word, the more immune I am to these kinds of lies. And so it's basically saying, I'm, I'm quieting those other voices telling me lies and that helps me hear God more clearly. And it's like, okay, 50 different voices yelling at me. One of them saying, I love you, you're still precious. All the others are saying, you're worthless, I hate you. Oh yeah, that one's God. I know that one's God because he's telling me what the word is telling me. And so I'm immune to these lies. It makes it easier to recognize God's voice and hear him clearly when I can hit mute on all these lies where I'm like, that, that is absolutely not God. That is not me. That's not the Holy Spirit. Um, oh, that one? Yes, that's God because he's telling me what the word says about me. God will never contradict his word. Mm -hmm. So it's crucial to get to know him through the word and get to know who you are through the word. It'll help you hear God more clearly. So again, you are a new creation and you have the mind of Christ. So you're not the one saying evil things about you. That's not coming from you. Stop owning it. Stop, stop struggling and saying, why do I have such a bad self-image? The real you doesn't. Those are lies and just recognize them for what they are. Start hearing God's voice um, more clearly, right? The, the real me thinks like God. The real me is love and joy and holy and righteous and full of wisdom and all these things. And so um, the more you get to know what God is like, the more you get to know what you are like if you're in him. And that helps it and makes it easier to recognize his voice. Another thing with this same point here, but is that if you think God doesn't like you, if you don't know what God is like, if you think God doesn't like you, then you will not recognize his voice when he says good things to you. Mm -hmm. And I see this a lot. It's very subtle, All right? You might say, I really, really want that career. It sounds amazing. <sighs> that sounds way too fun. There's no way that's God. Or, I really, really want to do this, man. That sounds awesome. No way that's God. God would only call me to things that are miserable. Yeah. I feel like I'm just sacrificing everything and it's just the worst. 
And if you think that that's what God is like, then you won't recognize his voice when he says, I like you, let's do something fun. And you'll say, no, no, there's no way you'd want me to do something fun. There's no way you'd want me to spend some of that money on me enjoying something. You, you would only tell me to give it away. That's all stemming from you thinking God doesn't like you, that God doesn't want to bless you. Yeah, other people are his children, but so are you. And sometimes he wants to bless you. It took me years for God to finally get through to me. He said, Daniel, you're good ground too. Stop only sowing outside. Let me sow into you. And it mm -hmm. blew my mind. See, that's the thing is if you have bad revelation, it will limit what you can hear from God because he's trying to tell you good things. And you're like, that can't be you. There's no way that's you because it sounds too good to be true. I mean, people even say things like, what's the last thing in the world you want to do? That's your calling. Mm -hmm. That sickens me when people do that. People usually have good intentions because they're talking about being willing to die to self and give God everything. And I'm on, I'm on board with laying down our lives and saying, God, I, I'll do whatever you call me to do no matter what. And, um, but having said that, God likes me. He's not going to, well, let me move to this real quick. Psalm 37, verse 4, delight yourself also in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. God's goal is for us to delight in him and he wants to give us the desires of our heart. That does include changing our desires, but he's showing us what our real desires are and then he's giving them to us. So again, if you don't know what God is like, you won't recognize his voice when he says, I want to give you the desire of your heart. And you're like, there's no way. There's no way that sounds too carnal. That sounds too whatever. And God's like, I just wanted to bless you. Yeah. Right. I love, I love giving my kids chips or snacks or whatever. I just want to bless you. I don't do it too much. Obviously. Anyway. I won't, I won't go on that rabbit trail. <laughs> I do what's best for them. I don't want to only give them what they think they want. <laughs> um, so number four, a very quick point. So number three was get to know what God is like, and it's easier to hear his voice more clearly. Number four is remove distractions. Like, like I keep saying, you know, for example, if there's 50 voices yelling at you, it's really hard. Imagine trying to watch a movie. And you're watching this movie, but somebody's playing the piano and somebody else is yelling and somebody else is listening to a CD player, you know, on speakers, CD players. I don't know if that exists uh, anymore. Um, somebody else is watching a different movie and all that. And it's like, OK, I could just turn up the volume to enjoy the movie. But, you know, it'd be really nice to remove some of these distractions. Right? Sometimes you need to turn the volume up, but sometimes you need to quiet other things. And here's the thing is that the more you want God, the more you want to hear his voice it'll become obvious what's a distraction. You know what, that's actually in my way. This right here is, is not helping me hear him more clearly. So I now want to let go of this, right? It's not a list of rules of like, if I want to hear God clearly, I have to let go of this and this and this and that. It's more like, I want to hear him so clearly. And you know what, that's not helping. Mm -hmm. And so I just lost my interest in that. And that's not helping, I lost my interest in that. And you know, I used to really enjoy that, but I don't enjoy that anymore because I'm so passionate about, about this right here. And so, Again, removing clutter is one of the ways to hear more clearly. And it's like watching a show that there's all the static and it's like, you know, fix the antenna. You know, I want to get rid of the static because I want to see more clearly. So similarly, removing distractions is a great way to hear his voice more clearly. Um, now, number five, mm -hmm. and sorry, we'll still have time for questions. This is, um, I'm on my last one here. Mm -hmm. um, build trust with God. The more you trust God, the easier it is to hear him clearly. See, it's, tr it's difficult to hear God's voice clearly if you're afraid of what he's going to say. Mm. If you go to God and say, tell me anything, and on the inside you're like, but please don't say this, and please don't say that, and oh my goodness, he might tell me to stop doing this, and oh my goodness, he might tell me to move over there. And, and you're like, you've got all these fears of what he might say, it's hard to hear him clearly. It's like looking at God through a fence. And you're like looking through, and it's like, I can kind of see but I don't really want to see, right? On the one hand, you're saying, God, I want to hear you clearly. The other hand, you're saying, not really, right? Or you're screening your phone calls, right? It's like, God, tell me anything. But if on the inside, you're like, and then once you tell me, I'll decide if I believe you. Or once you tell me, I decide if I'll obey you. Now you have this ulterior motive now where you're not truly willing to hear God clearly, right? So it's like, I want to, but I actually don't. So it changes everything if we can say to God, I am pre-committed to believing whatever you tell me even if it sounds too good to be true. And if it's something that in the, in the natural I don't like, I trust that it's what's best for me and that you'll change my desires, that you'll educate me on why I'm wrong about not wanting that. Or if you le lead me to go do something, I trust that you care about me more than I care about me, that you know what I enjoy more than I know what I enjoy. And when you can say that, see, you can't really say that to God, tell me anything and I'll obey if you don't trust him. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is that you don't just say, I trust you forever. It's the way you grow in trust is by walking with God, by living life with God. The more you trust him, the easier it is to trust him more. The more you walk with him, the more you get to know him, the more you trust him. 
so that you can get to a point where you can be totally fearless and say, whatever you say, Lord, I'm on board. I'll believe you. I'll follow you. Let's do it. Let's do this thing together. And so the less fear you have, the easier it is to hear him. And so, again, like I said, building trust with God is a great way to hear God more clearly because you're removing all these barriers of your fears of please don't say this and please don't say that and please don't say that. And you're like, no, I know you so much that I'm not afraid of what you might say because I know it's going to be really good. I know it's going to be to bless me. I know it's going to be to, to increase our relationship, that it's going to be a blast, that if I knew what you know, I would want it already, things like that. So again, the way we do this is we build momentum. Start where you are. And this is really crucial. Be patient with yourself. Don't beat yourself up for not trusting God as much as you want to. Start where you are. Because the thing is, like I said, each time you obey God, and by obey, I also mean believe him, right? If God says, I love you, when you say, you love me, that must mean I'm lovable. And you say, I believe you, instead of saying, no, 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 let's debate this forever. But if you say, okay, I believe you. The more you believe him, the more you get to know him. The more you get to know him, the more you trust him. The more you trust him, the more willing you are to hear him. The more willing you are to hear him, the more you hear him, right? And it's just a cycle of the more I trust God, the easier it is to hear him, the easier it is to hear him, the easier it is to follow him. The easier it is to follow him, the more I trust him. It just goes on and on and on. And so again, building trust with God is a great way to hear God more because you get to know him more. And I said, man, why would I not trust you? There's things that are easy for me today that 20 years ago were difficult. Where I was like, this is a huge leap, Lord. I don't know if I can trust you with this. And now I'm like, piece of cake. I know you so well. It's not that like, oh man, I'm so great now. It's no, I just know God better now. Where I'm not scared of what he's going to say. I don't know what he's going to say, but I know him so well. I know it's going to be good. It's like my kids opening Christmas presents. They're not scared that it's going to be something bad. They're excited because it's like, I don't know what this is, but I know it's going to be good. Same thing with hearing God, where it's like, I don't know what he's going to say, but I know it's going to be good because I know he loves me. And so the more we trust him, the easier it is to hear his voice. And it just creates this beautiful cycle. And again, it, it's all about that desire. Like the point number one I mentioned, the more you want to, the easier it is. Because it all if you seek him, you will find him. So again, I'll wrap up with that. Again, the, the core of this, though, is that you can hear God. You do hear God already. It's not about him speaking more or you getting better at hearing him, it's about hearing him more clearly and learning to recognize his voice, because you already do. And you can have that confidence and say, God, I'm just gonna stand in faith that I do um, and stop beating myself up that I think I can't, and I'm just gonna accept that I do, and now, okay, now, how do I hear you more clearly? How do I recognize your voice more? How do I get to know you more and all that? And so, it's a lot of fun. Like I said at the beginning, it's a, this is like the best part, or at least tied for first, of one of the best parts of the new covenant is that we get to hear God's voice. So pray it's been a blessing. I'll get to as many questions as we can. I'll answer in one word. I always say that and I don't. Um, uh, I'll answer as quickly as I can to get to, through as many questions as we can. Um, no, that was awesome. Yeah, so thank you all. Yes, thank you so much, Mr. Bennett. That was such a blessing. And I think that that will uh, really impact our lives and help us to focus on hearing God's voice. It definitely changes so everything to, it does. to live life like that. Yeah, yeah, live in that relationship with him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, well, yeah, we've got great questions, guys. Thank you. So Ruthie on chat says, I know I hear God's voice. However, I notice in some particular areas, there seems to be no clarity. What could be the barrier from hearing more clearly? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great question. And really, it could be a lot of different things. Um, like, say, for example, when I was in the Air Force, I knew that I was, I, God put in my heart to go to a Bible college when I got out or a ministry school or something of that nature. And I prayed about it for over a year. And I was like, why, why can't I hear? And sometimes it, it, I didn't even know Karis existed, though. And so in that situation, after, you know, when I heard Andrew teach, God's like, that's the Bible college I want you to go to. And I was like, oh, that was so easy. I was asking for something that it wasn't the right season for me to hear the answer. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes we stress out over like, I need a specific answer on this, right? Sometimes we give God the wrong multiple choice tests question. And we say, um, should I marry this person? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? And God's kind of like, you know, you're, you're putting me in a box. Mm -hmm. Maybe the answer's not yet or... No, I've got a totally different plan for you. You're, you're going to do this other adventure and then you'll get married in five years instead of next year or whatever it is. And so there's a lot of different nuances to this. But so with spe specific direction, sometimes it's a matter of um, giving God an open book or an essay question instead of saying this, this, this or this. I need this. I need an answer like this. And instead saying, God, what do you want me to do today? 
-hmm. You know, I'm just going to let you answer however you want. I'm not going to give you options and say you must choose one of the options that I can see because he might see totally different options. He might be approaching it in a very different way. Um, and, uh, and so you're saying like, I'm not saying you're saying, I'm saying we might be saying, mm -hmm. you know, I need... I need the answer to equal six. And so uh, three plus three, or is it three plus three or two plus four? And God's like, no, I'm going to do division. You know, that's yeah, a bad example. But my point is, let God lead you how he wants to lead you. And don't be afraid that if you, do, if you stop asking that specific question over and over, that he, he's forgotten about it, right? Or he might be saying, you're so fixated on this, you're missing the steps that I'm trying to take you through. And yes, don't worry, I gave you that desire, I'll get you there, I'll answer that question. But um, maybe we're asking the question the wrong way. That's kind of the bottom line I'm trying to get at. So give God the freedom to lead. I mean, so many answers God's given me in life came out of left field. Where it's like, you know, I'm just going to trust that you put that desire in my heart for some reason. I don't know what it was. And I'm just going to hear you today. And it's like, you want to talk about this? Well, I want to talk about that. But I trust you. And so I'm just going to talk about this. And God's like, and that's how this makes sense. And you're like, well, I never would have. Um, anyway, hope that helps. <laughs> My short answer to this is that sometimes we're not ready for the answer. And God's trying to make us ready for the answer so that then he can answer it. And sometimes we, we don't let him give us the answer we want because we're trying to frame it in the wrong way, in a limited way. Um, again, I don't mean wrong way. I mean, um, we don't know what we don't know. So let God just lead you day by day. Anyway, yeah. sorry, I did not keep my promise of quick answers. I hope that, <laughs> no, that was awesome. I can relate that seed time and harvest. Keep planting the mm -hmm. seeds that you have in your heart and over yeah. time, God will. Yeah. 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 So it's kind of like if you're yeah, looking at a test mm -hmm. or it's kind of like, uh, so you're looking down a road and you're saying, do I take a left up there or a right? And it's three miles ahead, mm -hmm. a left or a right, left or right, left or right. And God's like, by the time we get that far, we'll have been on a totally different path. It'll be a U-turn, mm -hmm. but I'll explain why in half an hour. You know, it's just right. one of those things of yeah. like, just trust me. I, I, there's a whole bunch of other things I want to do before you're ready for that answer. But today, right here, right now, um, okay, how, you know, what do I know? Yes. Yeah, for sure. So. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, Denise on Facebook has a question that might tie in with this one. Is it true sometimes that it's the desire in our heart, which you touched on, along with peace, that is God speaking? Yeah, I'd say those really are, in many ways, they're the exact same thing, just different ways of looking at it. Because, um, yeah, let the peace of God rule in your heart. God leads through desires, things like that. Um, many times it can be um, just this knowing, right? And this knowing can feel like peace or it can feel like a desire, whatever it is. It's kind of like... Um, uh, this is what God's leading me to do. I feel good about this. I feel, um, yeah, it's, it's, again, it's not always necessarily this like, yes, take that job. It might just be like, I really want this job. And the more I think about it and the more I spend time with God about it, the more I want it or the more I just feel great about this. And um, it could be excitement. It could be peace. It could be whatever. And so to me, those are kind of just different. It's like looking at different angles on a diamond, um, different facets to it, right? Where it's like, oh, if I look at it through this angle, it's peace. If I look at it through that angle, it's excitement or something. And so, um, yeah, again, it's like I, the more I spend time with God, the more assurance I have because I can see. A very short answer here also is um, you, you'll know them by their fruits. You know, how do I know if this is God or not? Well, what fruit is it bearing in me? It's bearing godly fruit. Okay, good. If it's bearing confusion, that is an answer. That's not God, right? This is one that I share with students all the time. Because if you're saying, should I marry this person? Yes or no, yes or no, yes or no. I don't know what to do. Should I marry them? Ah, I'm freaking out. Okay, that's chaos and confusion. That's your answer. That is not peace. If, if what you feel you're hearing from God is bearing godly fruit inside of you, that's a great uh, litmus test to be like, okay, you know what? I think this is God because it's bearing godly fruit. I'm, I'm feeling godly emotions because of this. Yeah. Um, and so anyway, it's a short answer to it. Yeah. We could unpack that more. But right. Try to squeeze in one more question because I yes, we can. went way too and long. You can always join us for the weekly roundup, which I believe is Tuesdays at 1.30, where they come back and answer more questions. So if we don't get to yours today, come back on Tuesday. Um, Daniel on YouTube has a phenomenal question. And again, you did touch on this, Mr. Bennett. How does the condition of your heart impact your ability to hear God's voice? Um, yeah, that's a very big question, and a lot of it depends on even what you mean by the condition of your heart. Um, on the broad 
spectrum. I don't think this is what you mean, but if you're not born again, then obviously that affects how you hear God's voice. I don't think that's what you mean though. Um, but as far as like, if you're seeking God, if you're not seeking God, if you, if you, uh, um, again, if your heart is full of distractions, um, so I guess I'm approaching it more from the positive side of if I want to hear God, it's easier to hear him. Mm -hmm. But another way to frame that is if I don't want to hear God, it's harder to hear him. If I remove distractions, it's easier to hear him. If I'm pursuing distractions, it's harder to hear him clearly. Um, he's always speaking to us and there's grace, right? So you don't have to, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes we say I'm in an emergency. I've been walking in sin nonstop, whatever. Therefore, I don't deserve to hear God's voice because it'll take me six months of prayer and fasting to be able to hear his voice. Like, that's not true. You can just turn around immediately and be like, okay, God, I, you know, I know I can hear you speak to me, Lord. I know that I filled my mind with distractions, but I still need to hear you right here, right now. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'd say, again, as far as the desires of your heart, that plays a role because it's, am I pursuing him or not? Am I focused on him or not? Um, do I, do I know him? Do I know who I am? Right. Am I believing lies that makes it harder to hear God's voice more clearly? And so, but as far as, um, and some of the more traditional meanings of this question of the condition of your heart, it's, it's kind of like, well, if you're walking in sin, then you can't hear God's voice. You're hardening your heart. And there's some truth to that, right? You can, your heart can grow cold to the things of God. But again, at the same time, you know, it's a, it's a gift. Our relationship with God is a gift. And um, it's more so lies, right? You can't hop off the throne and start walking away from God. If you're born again, you're seated with Christ in heavenly places. You can have a whole bunch of mental things in your way, but those aren't real things. Those are just lies and, de and deception. Mm -hmm. Your access to God is as open as Jesus is, right? If you're seated with Christ, there's as much between you and the Father as there is between Jesus and the Father in reality. Now, if you believe 50,000 lies, then you think there's barriers, so it's going to affect it. But, um, but again, our, our relationship with God and our access to God is by grace. And so if you say, well, I sinned yesterday, so therefore I, I have to re-earn my ability to hear God, that's, that's not um, how, this, how this works. It's a gift from God. You can't earn it. If we try to earn it, then we're going the wrong direction because, like I said, the more you get to know God, the easier it is to hear Him. But if you think you have to earn things, you're actually going the other direction. You're knowing God less and less because God isn't saying you have to earn this. He's saying it's a free gift you need to receive. So I'd say it's tied into what I've already shared. I just approached it from the positive angle of what we should focus on. Um, the opposite is like, yeah, if we don't do these things, then it's we're setting ourselves up for failure. But we can easily, we can always just turn around and re-receive that gift and say, you know what? I am who God says I am. So, um, yeah. sorry. It's a great question. I could, I could talk a lot more about that, but I'm over time. I hope that was a good enough quick answer yes. to, to help out. Yeah, that was super helpful, I, th I think. So thank you very much, Mr. Bennett. And thank you. Thank you guys for all your questions and for tuning in live. And thank you again for the teaching tonight. Yeah. This was a tremendous blessing, a great way to start the new year. Yeah, yeah. happy new year, by the way. Yes, said that, amen. Yeah. Happy new year to you all. And remember, we will be back tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. And you can tune in next um, to the Gospel Truth Conference live right after this. So stay tuned if you want to hear Andrew Walmack tonight. Have a wonderful evening. Yep. See you guys next Bye. time. Bye. I tell you, I'm excited. God is going to do something special during these meetings. The conferences are great. You're going to get a chance to meet people from all over the country, all over the world. The speakers are phenomenal. You are now the righteousness of God, and you got to quit looking at yourself in the natural, and you got to see yourself in Christ. Andrew's teaching and the love that he has for God's Word and truth, it is the gospel truth. Join us every weekday for our daily live stream on Gospel Truth TV. 